oral lichen planus. Oral, it is seen in the oral cavity. Planus means flat, okay? Lichen, a patch like le a linear lesion, and it's a flat lesion. That's why it's your oral lichen planus. And oral lichen planus is defined as a chronic autoimmune, okay? Chronic autoimmune mucocutaneous disease, okay? Chronic autoimmune mucocutaneous disease affecting the oral mucosa, the skin, the genital mucosa, scalp and the nails. Okay. So this is the definition of your oral lichen planus. It is a chronic mucocutaneous autoimmune disease affecting the oral mucosa, the skin, the genital mucosa, scalp and the nails. So what is this? Chronic. Chronic, it's a, a long duration condition. Autoimmune. What do you mean by the term autoimmune? Autoimmune means already your autoimmune disorders you have read. So this autoimmune is nothing but antibodies. That is auto antibodies are produced against the own antigen. That is the human body antigen. So self antigen, it is going to produce the auto antibodies. So that is your autoimmune. Mucocutaneous. Mucocutaneous means muco means your mucous membrane. Cutaneous means your skin. That's why it's a chronic autoimmune. That is auto antibodies are formed against its own antigen, self antigen. And it's a mucocutaneous disease. Now we will discuss the histopathology of lichen planus. Histopathology of your lichen planus. We'll show go on stepwise manner. So initially what you see in your lichen planus is your hyperparakeratosis or hyperorthokeratosis okay that is hyperkeratosis basically it's going to be a hyperkeratosis that is your keratin layer is going to be increased so the amount of keratin layer is going to be increased that is your hyperkeratosis and then one more thing whether it's going to be your para or ortho depends upon the type of your epithelium if it is going to be a hyper Keratinized epithelium, you see hyperparakeratosis. If it is going to be an orthokeratinized epithelium, you're going to see a hyperorthokeratosis. So the initial finding will be your keratosis, hyper, ortho, or parakeratosis. The second finding, what you're going to see is your hypergranulosis. You know, in case of your, let it be your parakeratinized epithelium or the orthokeratinized epithelium, you have a granulosum layer there just beneath the corneal layer. Why is it called the granulosum layer? Because it contains the granules which give that purplish color to that uh, cell. That is your keratohyaline granules. And this keratohyaline granules will be more prominent in case of your orthokeratinized epithelium when compared to your parakeratinized epithelium. So this, in case of your lichen planus, your granulosum layer will be increase the amount or the thickness of the granulosum layer is increased because of the increase in the number of your cell so that is your hypergranulosis that is thickening of your granular cell layer in the next finding what you're going to see is your acanthosis acanthosis of your spinous cell layer your stratum spinosum will exhibit acanthosis okay along with that what is acanthosis increase in your spinous cell layer so along with acanthosis the spinous cell layer also will show or exhibit your intracellular edema formation there. So intracellular edema formation, how will they appear? Acanthosis increases the number of cells and the intracellular edema will be like the, if you see the spinous cell layer, it will be pale eosinophilic in color because it's imbibed in water. So pale eosinophilic, this is your intracellular edema. So that will be your next finding. Acanthosis with intracellular edema of your spinous cell layer. The next characteristic finding is your a band of inflammatory cell infiltrate. Okay, I told right when the CD8 T cells and the keratinocytes under uh, apoptotic keratinocytes, what will they do? They for release your cytokines, especially your TNF alpha. What does this TNF alpha do? It will try to attract a more increase of your, try to attract your inflammatory component there, especially your T lymphocytes. So you will see a band of your inflammatory infiltrate composed predominantly of your T lymphocytes and your histiocytes there. So in the sub epithelial region, you will be able to appreciate a band.
band off okay? a complete band of your inflammatory cell infiltrate sub epithelial inflammatory cell infiltrate band can be seen which will be composed predominantly of your t lymphocytes and your histiocytes then the next characteristic finding will be your sawtooth retipex why do you get the sawtooth retipex i told because of the activation of the cd8 t cells what happens there is going to be basal cell degeneration that is your keratinocytes will undergo degeneration the basal cells keratinocytes will undergo degeneration as a result of which the normal retipex which is going to be there will become a sharpened retipex like a sawtooth you have seen the saws right where the carpenters use the tooth like edges so similarly your retipex will be in the form of a sawtooth that's why they are called as your sawtooth retipex why do you get the sawtooth retipex because of your basal cell degeneration these are the characteristic finding what you see in your lichen planus the first thing will be your hyper para or ortho keratosis the second finding will be your hyper granulosis that is thickening of your granular cell layer and the next will be your um uh, acanthosis along with intracellular edema of your spinous cell layer and next will be your sub epithelial band of your inflammatory cell infiltrate predominantly consisting of your t lymphocytes and your histiocytes and lastly your sawtooth retipex why the sawtooth retipex as a result of your basal cell degeneration due to the pathogenesis of your lichen planus because of the cd8 t cells there is going to be basal cell degeneration wherein the normal retipex the normal tube shaped retipex is lost where it becomes a straightened or thin knife edged one that is called as your sawtooth retipex these are the characteristic finding what you see in case of your lichen planus other than this what you will be able to appreciate is a uh, spaces okay you will be able to appreciate some clefts or spaces at the uh, junction of your epithelium and your connective tissue okay why do you get these spaces this is especially seen in case of your lichen planus and it's called as your max joseph space or your max joseph cleft so these spaces are seen especially in case of your lichen planus why there is going to be some disruption or disarrangement in the anchoring elements of the epithelial basement membrane okay so there is going to be some disruption in the anchor anchoring elements your basement membrane the attachments area so the anchoring elements of your epithelial basement membrane and the basal keratinocytes so the attachment between the basement membrane and the keratin basal keratinocytes there is some abnormality happening there so as a result what happens you get some histological clefts between the epithelium and the connective tissue which is termed as your max joseph space or your max joseph cleft and if you see clinically sometimes the patient might exhibit in such conditions a small blister in the lesional side or lesional area which will be represented as a small blister i am not talking about a typical vesicle or a bulla here this is nothing but a small blister which can be seen clinically and it's because of your disruption or disarrangement in the attachment between the basement membrane and the basal keratinocytes what attachments that is your hemidesmosomes are going to be there the filament attachments are going to be there and the supral attachments are going to be there. all these some problem is happening there because of the basal cell degeneration there as a result of which what happens there is going to be a cleft forming between your epithelium and the connective tissue interface leading to these clefts which are called as your max joseph cleft or the max joseph space next the other characteristic finding will be your basal cell degeneration if you see this picture this is your granular cell layer so this consists of your keratohyaline granules so normally it's just one or two layers thickness only normally but in case of your lichen planus four to five layers thickness it can be seen that's why it's called as your hypergranulosis and in the sub epithelial region you are able to see these dark cells which are nothing but your lymphocytes especially your 
T lymphocytes which are going to be there accumulating in that particular subepithelial region. As a result of these T lymphocytes, what happens? There is going to be basal cell degeneration. The cells of the basal area will undergo degeneration and they will appear as either colloid bodies or civet bodies or cytoid bodies or hyaline bodies. Different names are given for it, okay? Either colloid bodies, civet bodies, hyaline bodies or cytoid bodies. They are nothing but basal cells would have undergone degeneration as a result of the CD8 T cells, activation of the CD8 T cells. So, these are the apoptotic keratinocytes, that is the keratinocytes which have undergone apoptosis. How will they appear? They will appear as homogeneous eosinophilic globules adjacent to the normal basal cells. So, if you see this picture, they will appear as homogenic eosinophilic large globules with a loss of attachment is going to be there. If you see the normal basal cells, it is going to be cuboidal or columnar with a large hypochromatic nuclei. Whereas here, this has undergone apoptosis and it has lost its attachment. So, it will appear as a homogeneous structure with a nuclear remnant in it. This is called as your civet bodies, cytoid bodies, hyaline bodies or your uh, colloid bodies. So, these are the different names given to the keratinocytes which have undergone apoptosis which are seen in the basal region of your epithelium and lichen planus. So, these are the findings what you see in the histopathology of your lichen planus. So, the first thing what you see will be your hyperorthokeratosis or hyperparakeratosis. The second thing what you are going to see is your hypergranulosis that is your thickening of your granular cell layer. The third, the spinous cell will undergo acanthosis and then intracellular edema is also going to be there. Then what you see is a subepithelial band of inflammatory cell infiltrate composed chiefly of your T lymphocytes and your histiocytes. Then what you are going to see is the Retipex, the normal shape of the retipex is lost. They become thinned out like a knife edge. So that is called as your sawtooth retipex. Why do you get the sawtooth retipex? As a result of your basal cell degeneration, the shape of the retipex is lost. So this is the classical signs or the histopathology what you see in your lichen planus. Along with that, you will be able to appreciate your Max Joseph cleft or Max Joseph space. Why do they occur? There is some abnormality in the attachment complexes, that is your hemidesmosomes, your filamental attachments and the fibril attachments between the basement membrane and your basal keratinocytes. So, as a result of this disruption or disarrangement, what happens? A cleft can be seen, a cleft or a space can be seen at the basement membrane epithelium interface. This is totally different from your a vesicular bullous lesion if you see. This is seen because of a result of the disruption. A very small cleft can be seen which will not contain any fluid or structures within it. And then clinically this Max Joseph cleft or space can appear as a small blister in the skin or in the oral mucosa. In an initial finding you will be able to appreciate that. Next what you will be able to see is your basal cell degeneration, that is your apoptotic keratinocytes. They are called as your civet bodies, cytoid bodies, colloid bodies and your hyaline bodies. And how do they appear? They appear as round eosinophilic globular masses with few nuclear remnants in it and there is not going to be any attachment to it. If you see the normal basal cells, it will have a, either cuboidal or a low cuboidal shape with a dark hypochromatic nucleus and the attachments can be seen properly. Whereas in case of this degenerated or the apoptotic keratinocytes, the attachment is not going to be seen clearly and the shape is going to be a uniform one. A typical shape is not going to be there. It will be pale, eosinophilic and will be more larger than your normal basal cells with a slight nuclear remnant is going to be there. And in the subepithelial region, you will see 
n number of your t lymphocytes so more amount of your lymphocytes so it is more of a chronic disease so you have lot of your lymphocytes little bit of eosinophils here and there and your histiocytes can be appreciated in the sub epithelial band of your uh, like in planus area in the connective tissue area so this is the histopathological picture what i going to see in your like in planus